Narayanam Namaskrityam Narayanam Namaskrityam Naram Chaiva Narottamam Naram Chaiva Narottamam Devim Sarasatim Vyasam Devim Sarasatim Vyasam Tato Jayamudirayat Tato Jayamudirayat Nasta Preshu Vabhadreshu Nasta Preshu Vabhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhakti Bhavati Naistaki Bhakti Bhavati Naistaki we're reading Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 3, Chapter 6, Creation of the Universal Form, text number 40. Yato prapya navartanta Yato prapya navartanta Yato prapya navartanta Yato prapya navartanta Vachascha manasasaha Vachascha manasasaha Vachascha manasasaha Vachascha manasasaha Aham chanyaya me devas Aham chanyaya me devas Aham chanyaya me devas Aham chanyaya me devas Tasmai bhagavate nama Tasmai bhagavate Tasmai Bhagavate Nama Tasmai Bhagavate Nama Yato Prabhyanya Vartanta Yato Prabhyanya Vartanta Vachascha Manasasaha Vachascha Manasasaha Aham Chanyai Me Devas Aham Chanyai Me Devas Tasmai Bhagavate Nama Tasmai Bhagavate Nama Yato Prapyanya Vartanta Yato Prapyanya Vartanta Vachascha Manasasaha Vachascha Manasasaha Aham Chanyai Me Devas Aham Chanyai Me Devas Tasmai Bhagavate Nama Tasmai Bhagavate Nama Yato Prakya Nyavartanta Vachascha Masasama Aham Shatyai Nidevas Asmai Bhagavate Nama Yato Prakya Nyavartanta Manages? Anyone? Yata, Yata, from whom? From whom? Aprapya, Aprapya, being unable to measure. Being unable to measure. Nyavartanta, Nyavartanta, cease to try. Cease to try. Vacha, Vacha, words. Words. Cha, Cha, also. Also. Manasa, Manasa, with the mind. With the mind. Sa, Sa. Saha, Saha, with, with, aham, aham, cha, cha, also the ego, also the ego, anye, anye, other, other, ime, ime, all these, all these, deva, deva, demigods, demigods, tasmai, tasmai, unto him, unto him, bhagavate, bhagavate.
unto the personality of Godhead. Unto the personality of Godhead. Namah. Namah. Offer obeisances. Offer obeisances. Offer obeisances. Translation and purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada. Words, mind and ego with their respective controlling demigods have failed to achieve success in knowing the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Therefore, we simply have to offer our respectful obeisances unto him as a result of sanity. Purport. The froggish, the froggish calculator may raise the objection that if the Absolute is unknowable even by the controlling deities of speech, mind and ego, namely the Vedas, Brahma, Rudra and all the demigods headed by Brihaspati, then why should the devotees be so interested in the unknown object? The answer is that the transcendental ecstasy enjoyed by the devotees in delineating the pastimes of the Lord is certainly unknown to non-devotees and mental speculators. Unless one relishes transcendental, unless one relishes transcendental joy, naturally one will come back from his speculations and concocted conclusions, because he will see he will see them as neither factual nor enjoyable. The devotees can at least know that the Absolute Truth is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Vishnu. As the, Veda, as the Vedic hymns confirm, Om Tat Vishnu Paramam Padam Sada Pashyanti Suraya Bhagavad Gita also confirms this fact, Veda is just Sarveraham Eva Vidya the, the falsely, the false, uh, should also, uh, by culture, by culture of Vedic knowledge, one must know Lord Krishna and should not falsely speculate on the word aham or I. The only method for understanding the supreme truth is devotional service. As stated in Bhagavad Gita 1855, Bhakta Mama Bijan Nati Only by devotional service can one know that the ultimate truth is the personality of Godhead and that Brahman and Paramatma are only his partial features. This is confirmed in this verse by the great sage Maitreya. With devotion, he offers his sincere surrender, Namaha, to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Bhagavati. One has to follow in the footsteps of great sages and devotees like Maitreya and Vidura, Maharaj Parikshit and Sukadeva Goswami, and engage in the transcendental devotional service of the Lord. If one would know his ultimate feature, which is above Brahman and Paramatma. <clears throat> Thus end the Bhaktivedanta purports of the third canto, sixth chapter of the Srimad Bhagavatam entitled Creation of the Universal Form. Om Magyana Tamarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksurun militanyena tasmai shri gurave nama Shri Chaitanya manobhistam stapitam yena bhutale 
Swayam rupa kadhamayam dadati swapadantikam Bandeham Shri Gara Shri Yatapada Kamalam Shri Karun Vaishnavam Shya Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raganathan Vitam Tam Sajevam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Saitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakhanitam Sya He Krishna Karana Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpade Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namastate Tapta Kanchana Gorange Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vancha Kaupata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patita Nam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Atvaita Gadadha, Shri Vasari Gaur Bhakta Vinda. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So Maitreya is concluding his instructions on this creation of the universal form to Vidura. And he has concluded this section of the Srimad Bhagavatam by explaining the inconceivable potency of the Supreme Lord. And here in this verse he is explaining how even the controlling demigods have failed to achieve success in knowing the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So if even the controlling demigods are not successful in knowing Him, then it is going to be very difficult for common people to know Him. And Maitreya therefore says, we simply have to offer our obeisances as a matter of sanity. The problem is most people are not sane. So many crazy people. So many crazies everywhere. Yeah? Especially in the cities. When we go in the cities, when we go for Sankirtan, we go on Harinam, you see so many crazy people. <laughs> and of course people say we're crazy. And Prabhupada therefore wrote his article, Who is Crazy? Because the devotees would come back and tell Prabhupada, Oh, Srila Prabhupada, they say we are crazy. We gave up our jobs and we shaved our heads and we're wearing these clothes. They say we must be crazy. And we go singing and dancing in the streets every day. They say, they say we are crazy. So Prabhupada wrote his article, Who is Crazy? Yes, materialist people say we are crazy, but we say they are crazy also. And here you see Maitreya also saying the same thing. That just if, if people are sane at all, they will offer their obeisances to the Supreme Lord. But ordinary people are so crazy, they cannot offer obeisances, they cannot offer respect to anyone. People used to say, why we have to bow down? Why we have to bow to someone? And so Srila Prabhupada replied to them that if you do not bow to Krishna, then you will bow to old age, you will bow to disease, and you will bow to death. You will be forced to bow down. But the devotees bow down willingly. Freely, willingly, they're happy to bow down before Krishna and offer our obeisances. And by bowing to Krishna, 
means we will no longer see birth and death. But for the foolish people who don't bow down, they will be forced to bow down. Next life to become a dog, to become a hog, to become a tree. They will be forced to enter into these different species of life under the control of the laws of nature. The material nature is very powerful. Daivihi esha gunamayi mamamaya duratyaya. Duratya, very difficult to overcome. People try to fight against the material energy. They try to fight against old age and against disease and against death. But all men, all, every living entity is forced <coughs> to meet these things. In the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna says, Jatasya hi dhruvam ritu, dhruvam janmam ritasya cha. For one who has taken birth, death is certain. Prabhupada <coughs> would say, the death rate is the same as always been. What is the death rate? 100%. Everyone going to die. As sure as death. And death is sure. So, yeah, we have to point out these things to the common people, to the non believers, those who have no faith. We have to point out to them the facts of life, which they don't like to think about it. They know it's true, but they don't like to think about it. They, they just think, let me enjoy. Now, you know, so many countries have made marijuana legal. So everyone, so many places, they're smoking marijuana and they're thinking they're enjoying. Smoke marijuana and forget everything. Forget all the nature of the world, and just re enjoy. And so this is the ignorance of the materialistic people. They want to shut their eyes to the truth. They don't want to see the facts of life. They just simply think, let me enjoy. And they're trying, of course, to enjoy, but they're trying to enjoy something where there is no enjoyment. They're trying to find pleasure from the body. The body is not meant for pleasure. This body is meant for suffering. It's meant for misery. Every part of our body, it, gives you, it can give you so much pain, so much trouble. You have a bad tooth, oh, it's unbearable, you know. And, and you have a headache, it's, it's so, so difficult. Something goes wrong with the finger, you get a poison finger, it's so much trouble. Somebody pulls your hair, it's trouble. Somebody stands on your toe, it's a lot of trouble. The body is just meant to give us pain and trouble. Try to enjoy. <coughs> Try to enjoy the finger. That finger it can give you a lot of pain. Can it give you in, any pleasure? It's just made, for, made to give you pain. So many things, the, this material body, just source of trouble, source of pain. You want pleasure, there is pleasure, but we have to know where to find it. And so how, the devotees know that real pleasure is not found in the body, but the pleasure comes from the soul. We have to look within. We have to understand the real self. Common people, ignorant people, they try to enjoy the body. And how much pleasure they get. There's that song, sometimes we sing that song, Bhaja Hari Mana. He says, Sita Atapa Bhata Varesana Edina Jamini Jagiri Bipali Sevinu Kripana Durajana Chapala Sukalaba Lagiri. You sing that song here sometimes? Yeah? Famous song, right? Devotees, we like to sing the, these simple songs. 
very meaningful, you know. People work so hard, they accept so many difficult conditions, the rain and the wind and the cold and the snow, and sometimes it's the heat, and so, so many troubles are there. So many people, but say, no, I have to work, I have to work. Why? Well, to enjoy, eh? You, you have to serve wicked and miserly people. Bipali sevinu kripana durajana. Wicked and miserly people. You work in any job, you'll meet a lot of wicked and nasty, miserly people. I met this one lady, I was in Delhi, I was in Delhi and I met this young, young person. They were telling me how they worked very hard to get a job in the corporate world. And there's an area in Delhi, Gurgaon, and it's, and you know, it's all corporate industries there. It's all high-rise building. It's very modern. And she said, I wanted so much to get a job in the corporate world. And I got a job. I finally got in there. I got the job. And she said, it was unbearable. It was so, so terrible. How everybody was so nasty and everybody is so envious of each other. If one person gets promotion, then everybody is mad. Well, they hate it, you know. They really don't like it. Why, why, he, why they got it? Why I didn't get it? There's so much envy and so much backbiting. And, oh, it, she said, it's just unbearable. The atmosphere was so bad. She said, How, I cannot bear it. I, said, I have to leave. I can't. I wanted so much to work there. I didn't know what I was asking for. And that's true with many different careers which people take up these days. That it's so much struggle, so many difficulties. You work as a doctor, you take many pe young people, many of them, I'm, I want to be a doctor, and they want to study medicine. And they have to study for so many years exam after exam, and then after so many years, of st then internship, you have to go and work in the hospital all night. And you work in the hospital, don't think that people are nice to you. The patients will fight you and hit. There was this one devotee, she was working in the hospital in New York, and she said, it's unbearable. She said, so many people, they come, they, we have to tie them up to treat them. They're so violent. They try to hit you. They try to fight you. She said it's, it's so difficult trying to give people any kind of medicine. And so, so many difficulties are there. Be a lawyer. Many people want to be lawyers. You know? Again, study many years, take many exams, and be a lawyer. What does a lawyer do? They have to say good things about bad people. <laughs> Right? You get in the court and your job is to say good things about somebody who's a bad guy. <laughs> it's very difficult to uh, make a successful career in the material world. Mm. Anyway, uh, material life, you know, we have to appreciate how so many difficulties that the people go through and we're sympathetic to them. We encourage them, you know, just try to become Krishna conscious. Don't worry too much about your job. Do it. Do what you have to do. You have to put up with the things. But in your heart, the meditation, the concentration should be on becoming a devotee and chanting the holy name and understanding Krishna consciousness hearing more about Krishna. So here in the purport, Srila Prabhupada talks about how some people understand the Lord as the Brahman. And that's more common. Of Manushyanam Sahasreshu Kaschidyatati Siddhaye. Out of thousands among men, maybe one is endeavoring for perfection. 
Most people are karmis, mudhas. They just want money to drink beer, you know, and to enjoy their marijuana or whatever, and they're satisfied. But you get some rare souls who want to understand the truth. And then when somebody wants to understand the truth, often they go to, they find out about the impersonal Brahman, the impersonal aspect of the Supreme. It's easier to understand the impersonal aspect. It's not easier to realize it, but it's easier to understand, to think about it. Understanding, I'm not the body. You know, that's the easy part, to understand I'm, I'm not the body, I'm a soul. Oh, thank goodness for that. I'm so glad I'm not this body. We can give it up soon. Of course, if we're not careful, we take another body. We have to be careful, we have to plan. Where are you going to take your next birth? Where are you going from here? That's important for us. There, there's that book, Alice in Wonderland. I don't know if you have that in Swedish, but it's a famous yeah. book, Alice in, And Alice goes into the Wonderland, and she gets in the Wonderland, and then they ask, she, said to, she said to the people she met, she said, where do I go from here? And she said, well, oh, they said to her, where do you want to go? And she said, oh, well, I don't really know. So they said to her, then it doesn't really matter which way you go, does it? <laughs> doesn't matter which way you go. It does matter, of course, which way you go. It does matter a lot which way you, you want to go up, you want to go down, you want to come back. Where do you want to go? We have to be very focused. What are we trying to achieve? Do we simply want to come back again? Come back again in Sweden? Well, Sweden's a nice country, you know, it's not so bad. You know, come back again. No, we want to be very serious, very determined. I want to make a success of this life. And that means, if you read that book, Coming Back, have you read that book, Coming Back? Very simple book. It's written by the devotees, Makunda Goswami and other devotees, they wrote articles. Anyway, the final chapter in that book, Coming Back, is called, Don't Come Back. <laughs> If you come back, it means you failed. You failed this Krishna consciousness. We have to be very determined not to fail. Just like if, if you're studying, you know, you take a course, maybe you do some, you know, studies online or at university or whatever. But if you fail a subject, oh, it's such a nuisance, it's such a headache. You have to maybe do the whole course again. I was in Holland and there was one girl, young girl, she was finishing high school and she had eight subjects and she only passed four of them. So what to do? She has to do four more subjects again. She has to spend another year going through the whole thing to do, the, to do the, the, all the subjects she failed and maybe she has to even do the ones she passed. Mm. Mm. So it's such a headache, you know, when, so in the same way, if we fail, if we don't take advantage of our mission in human life to become Krishna conscious, then we don't know what will happen, what will be our destiny. If you realize the Lord as the impersonal Brahman, the all-pervading Brahman, then you can enter into the Brahma Jyoti. And there's a lot of so-called spiritual teachers just talking about the impersonal Brahman, merging into the oneness. There's even, there's a place called, in, well, what's it? I know the Chinese name, I don't know the name. <laughs> the, uh, uh, the, the University for Impersonal Liberation. It's in India, it's a place in India. And they're teaching this 
oneness. They're giving a degree to people in oneness, you know. <laughs> you go there and get the degree in oneness. And many people go. It's amazing how many people are attracted to these things. And there's this other lady, she's also very famous, she goes around the world, and she's got many followers, and she's teaching them to merge into the oneness, into the one, the Divine Mother, into the Divine, merge into the Divine Mother. And she, you know, anyway, this, practically everywhere you find, you'll find impersonal philosophy. Even in Christianity, there's a lot of impersonalism. If you look at Hinduism, it's full of impersonalism, so much. We could say that, is that better than Buddhism? Buddhism is Gnostic, what we call Gnostic, atheistic philosophy. What do they want? The nothingness. Their goal is the nothing. If you listen to a Buddhist master lecture, they never mention the word God. Never. They will talk about the, the, the void, the nothingness. So therefore Prabhupada went to the West when he was asked to give another prana mantra so that we could worship Srila Prabhupada more. Prabhupada composed this nirvisesya shunyavadi. Oh, Goravani Pricharini, Nirvisesha, preaching the message of Lord Chaitanya to defeat impersonalism and voidism. Impersonalism, the Mayavadis and the voidists, the Buddhists. Everything is void. Nothing is real. The Mayavadis say, I am you and you are me, we are all one. And the Buddhists say, nothing is real. You don't exist. Nobody is real. Nothing is real. Giri Rajswami, you know Giri Rajswami? Yeah, famous sannyasi, very senior devotee. Uh, so Giri Raj, when he was a young brahmachari, he was out on Sankirtan in the streets of Boston, and he met a young man who was telling him, Oh no, everything, we're all God. He said, we're all God. We're all one. It's all one. We're all God. And, and Girira said to him, oh really? It's all one. He said, okay, give me your wallet and give me your car keys. So the young man, okay, take, came on the, so Girira said, okay, thank you very much. Bye-bye. And the man, <laughs> just a minute, you've got my car keys, don't go away, give me back my wallet. And Giri I said, no, no, it's all one, it's all one, isn't it? You know, it's all nonsense. They, they cannot, they speak philosophy, they cannot apply this philosophy. And similarly, the Buddhists say, nothing is real. So, okay, I'll take my, I'll take this brick and beat you over the head. You don't mind, do you? It's not real. I mean, you're not real. You don't exist. Nothing is real. So I beat you over the head with this brick. And then, of course, the, <laughs> they understand. You know, this kind of philosophy they speak is just nonsense. But people are very gullible. They're easily tricked. And we have to try to give them the truth that there is a Supreme Personality of Godhead. There are different aspects to the Supreme, right? There's the impersonal Brahman, which is like the, Prabhupada gives the example about the rays of the sun, the, the, the light of the sun, the energy, the all-pervading Brahman. And then there's the, all, there's the Paramatma, the param we compare that, well, the, there's the light, the rays coming from the sun, there's a sun planet. And then in the sun planet, there's a sun god. So it's not that it's all one. There's the Brahman, there's the Paramatma, there's the Bhagavan. 
different features of the Absolute. When they first built the railway in India, people were very anxious to see the train. So many people gathered, they, want, they heard the train is coming, oh, we want to see the train. They were, they were gathering, and then in the distance, they saw in the distance, oh, there was a light. It was night, it was evening, and there was a light. It was a light in front of the train. So people saw the light and they thought, oh, that's a train. And some people went home. And other people waited and they saw in the distance, oh, they saw there was a train and there was smoke and there was carriages. And they thought, oh, that's a train. And they went home. And other people waited till the train came into the station and they saw on the train there was people and there was a driver of the train and everything. They saw all the details of the train. So that everything has to be understood in its proper way. We want to understand the, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. We have to understand his different features. In Srimad Bhagavatam, Sut, Sutta Goswami describes uh, Vedanti tat tatvam vidam tatvam yad jnana madvayam brahmeti paramatmeti bhagavan iti sabyate. Learned transcendentalists who know the absolute truth call this non dual substance as Brahman, Paramatma, and Bhagavan. So the Brahman is also a, it's an aspect of Krishna. But if you simply know the Brahman, you don't know everything about the Absolute Truth. You only know one feature. And similarly, if you know Paramatma, the all-pervading all feature of the Lord, then that is also not complete. But if you know the Lord also as Bhagavan, then you have understood the actual nature of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And then how to know Bhagavan? We can only know this Bhagavan feature through the process of devotional service. So Prabhupada quotes, Bhaktyamam Abhijananti, only by devotion can I be understood. In the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna explains, he says, Mataparataram nanyat kinchedasti dhananjaya, mai sarvamidam proktam sutre mani ganaiva. There is no truth <coughs> superior to me. Everything rests on me, just as pearls are strung on a thread. Just like we wear neck beads, so our beads are on a thread. We sh ideally, we should see the beads. We shouldn't see the thread, right? We just see the beads. But the beads are held together by the thread. In the same way, Lord Krishna is holding this whole cosmic manifestation, just like pearls are strung on a thread. You don't see the thread, you see the, we see the planets. We don't see Krishna. We don't see the all-pervading feature of Krishna, but he's there holding everything together. And Lord Krishna says in that same verse, there is no truth superior to me. Only Krishna can say this. Lord Shiva never said there's no truth superior to him. Lord Brahma never said there is no truth superior. None of the devas ever say there is no truth superior to him. Only Krishna can say like that. There is no truth superior to me. It's a powerful statement in Bhagavad Gita. Of course, not everybody accepts Bhagavad Gita. Oh, this is just your book. Oh, this is just your book. Why I should accept what your books say? But it's there. They don't accept Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavad Gita is also a sm smriti. They say, we want the Shruti. Shruti means the Vedas. Should be in the Vedas. Yesterday I was mentioning some people, the, Ved the Vedantists, the Gyanis, they only accept the Shruti. So sometimes in the, 
purports Prabhupada will mention, he will say, the Shruti mantra say, or the Vedic version says, and he'll quote something from the Vedas. Because sometimes you have to meet these kind of people. Just like one time in the USA, uh, His Holiness Ridayananda Maharaj was invited to give a talk. It was a, a symposium, a seminar, and different scholars of Sanskrit were there. You know, Ridayananda Maharaj, she has a PhD in Sanskrit from is it Yale or Harvard. Anyway, he was invited to give a talk, and there were many other professors of Hinduism there. And so he gave his talk, and there was this one, one professor he, who was a, he was a jnani, you know. <laughs> and he heard Riddhainanda Maharaj talk, and he's going, no, oh, yeah. What does he know? He's just a Westerner, you know, he doesn't know anything, just a new boy. He was a young man at the time. But then Riddhainanda Maharaj quoted one verse which is very powerful in presenting to the Mayavadis. Nityo Nityanam Chaitanas Chaitananam. And as soon as he said this verse, the professor was like, Sh oh no, why are you saying that? Uh, what? Why are you saying this verse? You know, he, he was really, he, because they cannot respond to this. Because this verse is so powerful, it's so clear. Nityo nityanam. Amongst all eternals, there is one supreme eternal being. Chaitananas chaitananam. Amongst all conscious beings, there's one supreme conscious being. And that one supreme Lord is providing the needs of all living entities. This is from the Vedas, from the the Shruti. So, they have no answer. They cannot answer these things. So, we're, we're trying to present this philosophy of Krishna consciousness. Srimad Bhagavatam, very powerful evidence. Of course, people argue, this, oh, this is a modern book. This, they don't believe it's Vyasa Dev. So many, there's all, you have to deal with these kind of different things. People say, Oh, it's done by Bopa Dev, it's not Vyasa Dev, it's a modern day thing. We have to present our evidence, the support, the conclusions. But gradually more and more people are beginning to recognize this supreme position of Srimad Bhagavatam. Even in the sense among the Sanskrit scholars, more and more people are appreciating not only the depth of philosophy, but the very, very special uh, poetry which is written here, the use of the Sanskrit language is also very, very powerful and very special here in Srimad Bhagavatam. So this is the mature contribution of Srila Vyasati. We don't just simply present Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavad Gita is our biggest selling book. People, a lot of, many people have heard of Bhagavad Gita. It's very commonly known now. So many people have come out with their Bhagavad Gita. But we're now, we want to introduce to them Srimad Bhagavatam. That the, if you read the Bhagavad Gita and find it interesting, then read Srimad Bhagavatam and you will be satisfied for the rest of your life. <laughs> right? It's a lifetime's mission to go through Srimad Bhagavatam. So this is our task as devotees. We want to present these things to people and try to bring them to the full realization of the personality of God. In the Chaitanya Charitamrita, it's also brought up in the be beginning of the Chaitanya Charitamrita. Yada Dvaitam Brahmo Panishadi Tadapya Shyatanova. Like that, there's a verse in the very beginning, Srimad Bhagavatam. You know these verses? 
Yadadvaitam Brahma Panishadi Tadab Yasyatanuba Yadmantaryani Parushiti So Shamsha Vibhava Sadaishwarye Parno Yaiha Bhagavan Satvayam Na Chaitanyat Krishna Jagati Paratatvam Paramiha uh, It's written there that what the Upanishads call the impersonal Brahman is but his all-pervading feature. It's just the effulgence of his body. And, yeah, it's not his all-pervading, it, it's just the, the effulgence, it's just the dazzling effulgence from his body. And the Paramatma is his all-pervading feature. But he is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, full of all opulences. And those who have properly understood the Absolute Truth, then they will surrender to this person and take shelter of his lotus feet. Okay, any questions, comments? Yes, Maharaji? Uh, what, what did she say just now? I, I heard Prabhupada in a class, he was saying, Islam and Christianity, this is Bhakti. This is Bhakti. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, he was hearing the Quran. He was in Tehran and he could hear the from the mosque. They were reading out the Quran and Prabhupada had the, the man translate it. And he said, yes, very good. Uh, one man in Calcutta is a Muslim man and he teaches English in a, in a school, in a college in Calcutta. He wrote a book comparing the Bhagavad Gita and the Quran and he showed that everything which is there in Quran is also there in Bhagavad Gita. And so the, the, it's bhakti, it's certainly devotion there. But it can be also mixed devotion, you see, there, you see it's not pure, de they have different desires. Anya bilasita sunyam jnana kadma janavritam. Rupa Goswami describes pure devotional service, that it must be without desire for fruitive activity or philosophical speculation. Now most people, although they may be Christian or Muslim, and these paths also have a lot of devotion in them, generally they worship God with material desires. So that is not pure devotion, that is mixed devotion, right? Karma Mishra Bhakti or Jnana Mishra Bhakti, the desire for impersonal liberation. Where there is genuine devotion, there will be also knowledge as well as detachment. These two things should be there wherever. All right. Vasudevi Bhagavati Bhakti Yoga Prayojata Jnana Yati Asuvairagyam Jnanam Chayada Hai to come. By application of devotional service, one develops automatically causeless knowledge and detachment. It's important. People should be hearing and cultivating knowledge. Just like in our Krishna consciousness movement, we want everyone to hear and to read the books and learn. We don't want them just simply to chant. We want them also to learn the philosophy at least if you're going to go into second initiation, take Brahman initiation, then uh, t uh, spiritual teachers like Srila Jaipataka Swami Maharaj, he has requested everyone to have uh, attended Bhakti Shastri course. They should have studied the Bhakti Shastri. And even for first initiation, we have the disciple course the ISKCON Disciple Course. And that's, again, that's helping people to understand, to learn the philosophy, learn the teachings, what's going on. 
not just come and put money in the box, you know, can I get initiation? <laughs> yeah. We want people to learn how much are, we want people to understand these teachings. Prabhupada sometimes said, he said, I'm doing the ritual, giving the initiation. He said, it's up to you to apply the process. The process is hearing and chanting. So chanting means we should follow the orders of the spiritual teacher. And the spiritual teacher orders, he wants us to read the books, to read the books, to learn. And Prabhupada used to ask us. He, I was, I remember one time he came to Dallas, and there were little boys there, and we chanted Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. He turned to the boys. He said, "What's the meaning?" Immediately he was asking the boys, "What's the meaning of this?" He wanted them. To, he didn't want that we'd just be mechanical. He wants us to know these things. We used to go on morning walks with Prabhupada and regularly he would ask us, what is that verse? Who knows that verse? He expected us to, to know all these things, to learn slokas and be able to quote. Devotee was singing the song. He came to the temple in Atlanta and they had beautiful Gornitai deities. And devotee was singing Para, uh, Paramakaruna Pahadvijana. And Prabhupada said, do you know the meaning? He said, if you don't know the meaning, there's no benefit. You have to know this, the meaning of these songs. And like that, Prabhupada was very thorough in teaching us Krishna consciousness. How much he wanted us to learn everything nicely. So people may be a Christian and Muslim, they have some devotion for God, but they don't have much knowledge. Of course, we have some people like, uh, they say Gorkishore Das Babaji was illiterate. He, 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 could, he, he never got a proper education, but he had realization. And if anybody asked him, he could answer, he could explain. And he, he somehow, he, he, Krishna gives the knowledge from the heart. So, if someone's a sincere Christian or a sincere Muslim, then probably they'll take birth in the Krishna consciousness movement. Right? They've got some bhakti then they can come again into the Krishna Consciousness Movement and perfect that bhakti. Okay, any other question? Okay, thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Srila Prabhupada. Have some more nuts, if you can. Thank you.